Okay. Hello, hello. Let's see, do I have audio? Yes, I have audio, perfect. All right. Um, hi, it's me, Sophie. Um, Sophie Merriam. And uh, I'm back with another live. And today is gonna be a little different. Um, I've decided to do something with Photoshop. Now, you can see below me, there's this fun little character. Um, the outfit of which I took from Pinterest. Uh, and I just thought, oh, it's a cool costume. And then I remember seeing um, this image. I think it was like a really, it was kind of a realistic painting of someone wearing uh, like a military uniform, but it was just like a cat head on the top. And I think that really uh, kind of piqued my, you know, creativity. I wanted to do that. So in Photoshop, I took the outfit, which I think when I went to the original source of Twitter, I think someone actually said that this was Napoleon, one of Napoleon's outfits. Um, sorry, Napoleon, I'm taking your outfit so that I can use it for my drawing. <laughs> Uh, he's pretty cute. Uh, I think it was a separate photo and what I usually did before, which is something where I would put the outfit and then the animal separately, but I think with Photoshop we can do all of this photo magic and um, <laughs> make something like this below. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just use this as my reference. Um, it's already perfect. <laughs> Not really. But, um, so we're going to use this and we're going to use color, uh, markers for that. I've tweaked the colors a bit since I realized that, um, I was first going to use pink because surprisingly the waist coat or the waist sash is in this like pinkish red, but I couldn't find the exact color that would match the blues. So I got a bunch of blues here. And I was thinking that this would be the blues. Hey, there we go. We got some focus. Um, come on. So the blues don't really match the pinks here and it would just be too strange. So I swapped out the pink for this orange because it matches his fur. This is, to be honest, my favorite orange. And I think it'll just kind of look nicely because um, they're both contrasting colors, um, no, complementary. <laughs> Am I an artist? Um, complementary colors, the blue and the orange, but I've decided to mute the orange so that the blue kind of pops out a little bit more. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, if you wish to continue with me, stay tuned. I'm gonna start the sketch right now. And then once the sketch is over, um, we're just going to line it and then we're going to color it in. Um, as per usual, I use my, um, gosh, what is this? Pencil. I don't remember. Oh, it's a Stedler. Stedler? It's just a pencil. It's just in 2B or 2H. Sorry, 2H. Um, you can use whatever you want. I personally just like using, I'm just kind of marking the edges of my paper for now. And for focus, I'm going to grab a kneaded eraser. And we're going to use that to help focus our paper since there's not much going on right now. Um, and our paper just ends up being really blurry if we don't. Okay. So let's start with this little, this little guy. Okay. I think it should be a little lower. So we're in portrait mode. So, which means that it'll be a little bit kind of Thinner. We can grab our ruler, and I would say I'm going to be working with a four width and then hopefully a five inch height. OK, 
can't really do it. Eh. It's not really possible with this page, so I think I'm just going to end up with a four. So it'll be kind of like a square this time. There we have it, folks. This is the four. Four by four square we're going to be using today. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, if you live in some place that's getting a lot of snow, I feel for you. I do not know what that's like, but I've heard it can be really pretty if you don't have to deal with it. Um, I know a couple of people who moved from a really cold climate to this warm climate, and um, I'm like, oh, I didn't know you guys had to deal with icicles and all of that. You know, I think it's because I live in the desert, and being... <laughs> Being so far away from the cold weather just kind of doesn't doesn't help, doesn't put anything into perspective. You're just thinking like, oh, it must be nice to be cold every once in a while. But I've seen those cars that are covered in all of those like icicles and snow and water pipes leaking in garages and then the, the car is completely covered in ice. Um, that to me is so otherworldly. So, we're gonna start, I already set up my page, basically like, you know, the width and the height, and um, I'm just gonna go for what I think will be the proportions of my guy. So, there's not too much happening, but what I'm gonna do for the sake of making things interesting is make the bottom of the cape fill a little bit. So I'm just gonna make that a little bit wider and then the shoulders will be pretty wide and we can we can zoom in actually maybe that would work yeah we can zoom in a bit and um, work with what we got in the square format you can still work with the longer you know torso but i'm finding that it'd probably just be a bit more exciting to work in this manner okay so He's got, he's got the most amazing, fluffy, fluffy moment. I love it. Okay. So I think, I think because I thought I was working in a bigger format, I got confused. So let's start from about the edge of the canvas is here. Okay. About here. Just gonna go with what we know of the cape of the front the other side so there's a cape and then there's the underside of the cape which is kind of what I'm getting is that there's like the overside of the cape is going to be blue and then the underside which is what we see is the underside of the cape which is in white so that'll be interesting we have our head, which is a bit bigger, but it's kind of a stylistic, you know, reasoning here. We have our head, our ears. The ears are small, covered in fur. There's about fur here and fur here, so the divot in between is smaller. Um, we have our eyes about, I don't know, here, maybe? We have our nose. We have our mouth. What about... I think this is about how big the face is, the chin, and then there's a bunch of fluff that is also within the coat. <laughs> so overall sketch shape success. Okay, now I'm just going to keep working on the other parts. What a shoulder span, though. <laughs> Not that I'm looking at him. He's quite a quite a big boy. I think I'm making him into a bigger boy than I thought it would be, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles, right? Okay. So I'm just 
gonna work with what we got. There's this part of the cape. I would say we have a bunch of kind of pleats on the outside. So we're gonna keep that in mind. We have a What is it? The, uh, the cape is tied together with this kind of rope material. It's probably soft and fancy and, you know, gilded with some gold. You know, all that kind of fancy stuff. But yeah, um, I don't really have much to... I know I was talking about the um, the weather, but other than that, I think that there's nothing really that I've been kind of looking at. To be honest, I'm just looking at the way that Texas is dealing with their snow right now. Um, I feel for them a lot. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention I am a slow sketcher so takes me a bit of time and i'm just gonna sketch this out and i'm really liking these buttons there's like this pattern on the on the like front and then you get these Maybe it's about here, because it has to be in the front. So I think I misunderstood. And then it ties. So there's some sort of tie here. And I think we probably have to deal with a pattern of some sorts. But I'm not sure what kind of pattern. I guess I'll just go with what it looks like, which is basically just a bunch of really small leaves. So that'll be something. And it's a 2H, which means that, or the pencil that I'm using is a 2H which means that you'd probably have to press a little bit harder to get some sort of, you know, darker color. But yeah, hope your guys' this week has been going well. I had the most insane headache, um, which is why I had to postpone my yesterday's live. Um, I don't know where it came from. I went to the dentist, and every time I go to the dentist, I end up getting some sort of cold. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I really have no one to blame but myself, um, because... I suppose I've been quarantined for so long that my immune system is like, oh, you're going outside? Good for you. Well, <laughs> you're going outside for something essential like dentistry? Well, ma'am, we will, <laughs> we'll give you a cold. Don't worry. This is the time for colds. 
And it is, it is the time for colds. Um, it's winter time, everyone's indoors and colds are spread via air. They're all airborne. And um, honestly, I have, it's not like I can, you know, rely on vitamin C <laughs> to fight it off completely. I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So there you have it. So yeah, I'm sorry, I had to cancel last minute um, yesterday, but I was really looking forward to doing something a bit, you know, silly and fun with this. Um, so that's why I still decided to do it today. So I think we have our head proportions <clears throat> and our torso proportion down, I think. This part's darker, so his sleeve is darker because it's in the darkness. Um, we have some of this. Also, I still need to do all the detailing on the sleeve as well as figure out how this waist is tied. Um, I suppose it's tied like this with a couple of like fabric lines coming in and out. There's a bit of a knot here. And then there's some of that. So we'll work with what we got uh, for now. And the background will be black, of course. I forgot to bring out the black. Um, sorry, I just put my entire arm in the shot. Hmm. It appears that I put the black back. Okay. Before I go further with the sketch, I'm gonna grab my black color. Um, it's a Copic marker. Um, I usually use Copic markers. I've kind of been um, really kind of focusing on using a lot of refills more than trying to get the marker and um, you know rebuy markers all the time. It's probably not good for the environment or any of that sorts that's a bummer i must have put it somewhere my desk is um probably quite messy so i'm just gonna grab the the other black marker for it that i have but yeah did my cat knock it off my table eh, it's not important for now let's just continue so What was I gonna say? Oh, I think I'm just gonna start doing the details of the outfit. Um, there's not really much details since um, it's kind of just a character against a black background. Um, the outfit was against a black background. So I ended up just kind of superimposing the face and the um, outfit in general there as well. If you guys like the outcome of this or you think it's fun, we can always do way more types of these. I can go crazy in Photoshop. We can always do that. Photoshop is just so fun to use um, when it comes to doing crazy things. I think I've done a lot of um, just fun mock-ups of perfumes sometimes, just for fun when I'm feeling stressed. <laughs> I don't know. 
I think it's just enjoyable. He's got this like rope detailing that's gold on the edge of the robe, so we're gonna have to do every single one of those <laughs> robe detailings. So I think that's the only thing that's a little bit difficult about um, this portrait, I guess. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It's a cat's head on a military uniform. And um, I think that, so, so what I really like is I really love historical outfits. Um, and what I mean by historical is that I might not have enough information about what century it's from or where it's from, but I love the way that, uh, maybe, maybe a better term would be that I love the way that nobility um, used portraiture. So I know it's not their everyday outfits, like using all those, you know, beautiful silk, you know, garments and fur. It's probably not something that they use all the time, but I just like the way it all looks. So, so yeah, that's why I just like looking at them. I like, you know, fantasy outfits, even fantasy outfits like um, Bridgerton, which are not particularly accurate at all. I, I wouldn't say they're accurate. I don't think anybody who knows their two cents would say they're accurate. Um, as well as the whole, I think there's something before that I've seen in some, you know, fantasy genre stuff, which is they'll take the character and they'll put them in this like ball gown and they'll leave their hair down, which is a big no-no to be honest. And I've only seen maybe like one or two kind of like fantasy comic novels that don't use that trope. Um, but normally they do. They use the whole fancy ball gown and then hair completely down, not even like braided, nothing. Um, and usually you didn't do that. That was pretty rude and just kind of like getting out of bed and not doing your hair at all, I guess. Maybe some people would notice. In the modern era, it's way more relaxed and casual. Um, but back then, not so much. Even so, I still like looking at their outfits. Even though I would probably have be so annoyed out of wearing all of those layers. Can you imagine the heat? Oh, I dropped my pencil. The heat would just render me speechless. I don't think I could go on. What, what is it that people say? I would simply pass away. Sure, I would simply pass away. All these little leaf. See, I can't tell if these are leaves or if these are... Their shape kind of looks like a, a feather, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's the case. Okay, so let's do the rope here. This is the rope. Sorry, I already messed it up. So in order to do rope, you can do something really easy, um, which is, I'll show you. I'll use my fun thumbnail that I'm doing for my, um, my newest page. So you take your pencil and you just go like this. And it's like kind of making a bunch of curves, like a bunch of open C's. And then all you do is that you just kind of close it to give the kind of idea that it's a rope. So most of the time there's like one side that's more prominent than the other, or you can do this. You can do that too. That's just like a little bit of like a looser twist. And then this is more of a tighter twist as you can compare them and the two if you wanna do rope. Okay. So, 
So let's do that. And we have what I would give to wear this kind of cape. I would just feel so cool in this cape. No one could say anything to me. I could I could walk in a Trader Joe's and I would feel like heck. No one can tell me anything. <laughs> Look at my cape. <laughs> sure, all kinds of grocery stores. Kroger's, uh what was that? There's like there's food in Walmart. You can go to Walmart, anything, truly. I just like fancy clothes. And I guess we don't wear capes because they're just too cumbersome. Getting in and out of your car would be a really big pain in the booty, I think. I think it probably would be. Okay, so now it's time for the big... Um, sorry, the big leaflet. So there's like leaf pattern here and then here and then um, we're gonna work on the face. The face will be last because I think it would just be easier for me to work on the face last. So we're going to do that. We have this belt coming on here. I think it looks a little better. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we got the sleeve, we got the arm, got my cracking wrist, no big deal. <laughs> okay, so, but yes, there's all sorts of fun outfits that I love looking at. And when Harry Potter was a really big thing, long, long ago, I was, <clears throat> I was such a big fan of their robes. Um, and I can see, so I think my fondest memory was reading, I think the fifth book, and there's a passage where they're at some sort of like, you know, tournament get together of witches and wizards and there's like tents everywhere. So think of like, I don't know, Burning Man, but instead of, um, <laughs> instead of all of Burning Man, it's just witches and wizards and robes. And there's this one particular scene where this old, kind of older gentleman comes out of his tent and he's, all he's wearing is a rope and like nothing underneath. And his assistant comes out and is like, you can't be doing that. You know, what are you doing out here? And he's like, back in my day, we didn't wear anything under our robes. Um, and I remember thinking like, you know, maybe he has a point, it would probably be so comfy to just literally wear a robe and just wear like the little under shift garment and then go about your day so yeah i have the strangest memory i remember all sorts of weird things about everything <laughs> um my family used to call me the mini encyclopedia because i would like learning about all sorts of fun things and I'd say, did you know? And then I'd ra rattle off with what I had learned. Like, did you know that, uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I don't remember what I said, but it was definitely cat related because I love cats and I still love cats. I went to the Barnes and Nobles when I was really small and I would often get gift cards because my family wanted to, you know, reward me for reading, but also being like, yeah, go buy more books, small child. Um, and then I, <laughs> I would go and I would buy all sorts of books and I was in the clearance rack, which is kind of like the fun books and the game stuff. Um, now, which is kind of the majority part of the front of the, you know, Barnes and Nobles. And I would go and I would um, kind of pick random books and I think I, got a cat encyclopedia once and I thought it was the best thing ever I, I I took it home and I had a cat at the time his name was Jesse um 
and I liked to name him Jesse because of the song um, Jesse's Girl. <laughs> Is that silly? Uh, I remember watching the movie 13 Going on 30 or something, and uh, <laughs> there was this song in it called Jesse's Girl, and I thought it was great. And from then on, Jesse was was my kitty but um yeah I would go home and I'd read the book about cats and then I would try and, and see if they were true so I'd like you know all the behavioral stuff of like what to do what not to do with your cat like I'd read them all up maybe another lifetime I would have been like maybe Jackson Galaxy and um doing my thing you talking to cats on <laughs> on the YouTube on the TV I don't know I love Jackson Galaxy. He's like, he's such a, he's such a wholesome guy. There we have it, our face. Um, still got some work to do with the proportion, but I think probably bigger eyes would match. Um, and I'll probably make them a little, you know, defined and, and smaller and fix the nose up and work on the thing and then we can work on the line work and then we can work on the coloring so I'm gonna just do the final sketchy bits and um, yeah sorry sometimes I ramble and sometimes I just draw so that's good so I watched a recent episode of Jackson Galaxy and um, he, I think he's, was it, a, was it a recent episode? It was on, um, it was on my, my cat from hell or something. And this cat, whenever their owner would cry or laugh, the cat would just um, lose their marbles and try to attack their owner. And I remember thinking, that is so wild. And Jackson Galaxy, he, he went in front of the cat and he said, he just started doing his little fake cry. And that fake cry cracked me up so hard. Um, I don't know if you can find that video on YouTube, but I watched it on YouTube. And that was, I've never seen Jackson Galaxy like fake cry, but it was like a, <laughs> um, he's great. I like him. He's awesome. He's, he does really good work. Um, with cats so that's all I gotta say <laughs> I don't want to make any like bad um, unpleasant noises so I'll refrain from any fake fake cry okay let's see is that eye too big oh it should be fine There we go, looks a little better. We have a little bit of like a shadow on the top of the nose and that's just the coloring of the cat. And there's some like, um, kind of like a warmth, kind of more of like an orangey type um, in the shadows of the cat's fur. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for that and define some of these areas a bit more significantly. because the face is much smaller. So there's like the face and then the floof. And um, we just wanna focus on the face. Oh, smiling too much. <laughs> okay. And I'm using my kneadable eraser because it's just my favorite thing in the world. It's so helpful. And it gets the job done. Okay, 
So we have some shadow about under the eyes too. So we have a little bit of like a, like a rosiness under the eyes about here. So like, I would say I would imagine someone who's got like a ruddy face. Um, so like maybe someone who's of a lighter skin tone and lighter hair. That's kind of what I'm picturing with this little guy. Okay. Maybe he's not so little either. <laughs> okay. I like the way he is. I'm really digging his vibe. And I think, I think we're basically ready for the line work. Yeah, I think I'm pretty satisfied with the eyes and the mouth and the face. Um, okay, and we're going to be using a 0.3 liner because um, I realized that the lighter liner that I used last time was a little too light and you couldn't really see what was going on, which was a big bummer. Um, I had to reline a couple portions, so I've upped my liner size from a point or a 0 0.1 to a 0 0.3, so I've doubled it. So hopefully it'll appear more interesting on, on camera and also more clear. So I'm going to start about here. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more obvious, a little bit more seen. I like that. And I like making a wider, so this is something I've noticed often is that when you look at some pieces of art you can kind of get a sense for what looks good and what kind of doesn't look good and some I think some artist on YouTube was talking about how they noticed that um, creating a figure that's basically a straight up and down image is often not dynamic and having kind of a appendages out and creating a very memorable silhouette is very important in character design. And um, there's a lot about art that I really don't know about. Um, I would say I've been only doing this for maybe like two years or something. And I didn't go to art school, so. I really genuinely think looking at videos on YouTube is, is just so helpful. If you ever get the chance, the amount of free resources out there is um, immeasurable. Yeah. So I think it was MBMA animation or something. Um, sometimes animation principles can help with traditional work too. So. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that. No, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say that, um, so I'm trying this out, which is kind of making a, a more like his cape billowing out, I think would be more interesting. So that's just me. And I also made his eyes a bit bigger so that he looks more dynamic. So that was the part that they talked about in their video, which was the kind of exaggeration of some parts of the character to make them a bit more memorable and to kind of make them more interesting. So trying that out. Um, let me know if you think it works. Let me know if you're interested. And if you're not interested, also let me know. I am, I'm not the type to get offended off of criticism. Um, I'm definitely very new and if there's anything that ever doesn't look right, I'd really love to know. Um, but yeah. Oh, this point, this zero three is just looking much better on camera. I'm already very happy with it. And I hope it comes out on the page properly. So let me double check and see. Oh yeah, it looks much better. Okay, because I have one screen here because I'm double 
what is it? I'm double screening. I'm trying to figure out what looks good on the live and what doesn't. So there we go. So I'll continue and keep talking, I suppose. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to go for all of these little details first as I'm doing the line work and um, getting everything settled. So, uh, sorry, speaking of that animation video, um, they were talking about how exaggerating parts of your character and making their silhouette look more interesting and more visible means that you take whatever drawing you've had and try to mask it out or black it out in um, Photoshop. You don't have to do it in traditional because then that would ruin your drawing. But if you could just take a picture and kind of like trace an outline around your character, and if your character kind of looks like a blob, it's not exactly a memorable silhouette, and it, that can be remedied to make your character look a bit more interesting. So that was something that I really appreciated and I liked, because I do find that um, I do find that difficult to do. It can be hard to make a very interesting character. So. And also they said something that making a memorable character means that they can look pretty much the same in all different types of styles. And I was like, oh, is that so? <laughs> so I never, I'd never really thought of that before at all. Um, who knows? I'm gonna have to see and try that out and look. I think their reference was, um, Simpsons. The Simpsons are a really memorable style and you can basically do a lot with that. You can, you know, make the Simpsons look like the Simpsons even in a different style. But I think that's mostly for animation. Um, sometimes having a regular character is okay too. It's all a matter of like preference and what you're doing, what your goals are, how you want to approach things. Um, I wouldn't say that anybody's inherently wrong. There's a lot of times where um, I'll see an artist and they'll be doing amazing work and their work will have neon in it or have conflicting bright colors in it, but it just works and they're doing a great job. So if you feel like you want to improve in a, in a specific way, go for watching different YouTube videos. But if you feel like you know, maybe your art journey is, is going the way you want it to. That's cool too. I think it's all about not creating pressure because I pressure myself all the time. I'm like, no, this looks awful. And I'm still working on stuff. So sometimes it might be true. Sometimes something is awful when I have to go back and really consider like, what did I do to make it this awful? Is there a way for me to, you know, fix this? So as you can see here, I'm kind of creating some hatch marks here and there um, to create a little bit of depth in the ink work. Um, this is pretty common if you're just using like a white and black, but um, I don't only use white and black and I still find it helpful to use hatch work. Um, I think I still say it wrong. I think it's hatching actually, but it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. <clears throat> so, oh, we have another, I forgot to make that line. Okay, we're good. What else we got here? We have to do the face. I have totally missed the mark on doing the face. Okay, so I believe we still have this collar. It's a collar. We still have that part of the collar to do, and then we'll start on the face, and then hopefully I'll be able to um, do a little bit more hatch working if needed in a thinner pencil. So sometimes, um, 
This can be helpful if you're trying to create a really delicate shadow or a really delicate um, section, which is to use a lighter. So this is the, the zero one. And as you can see, it's so light. And it's really thin, but it can kind of create a bit of hatch working that doesn't show up too readily for the eye. Does that make sense? So it can be so nice and subtle that um, it's not as thick as all of the other lines. So that's kind of my, my statement here, my, my recommendation. But like always, you don't have to do anything that I say. You are free to do as you wish, to be as you wish, if you can. All right, so we have our little guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for all these little lines here. All the little fur that kind of goes across his ears, um, which is super cute. There's all there's a lot of little fur stragglers. He also has these little ones that come up here. I think probably once I'm doing the coloring, I'll probably take my um, gel pen and lighten up the areas around his like fur all these little stragglers kind of like the flyaway hairs that, I, that people have because the background will be completely black and i'm using a black lighter so it will kind of disappear at some point which i don't want to happen so we're going to hopefully keep that keep that settled so i'm just going to work on the eye he's so cute Oh my gosh. I have taken a liking to him. <laughs> oh, I love fluffy cats. I have a fluffy cat right now. His name is Moosh. Moosh was found in the backyard of my family's house. And they thought he belonged to someone, but he was too small and skinny. So then they realized that he was a, he was a little stray boy. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly try to take these areas that have been darkened with my pencil and just sort of darken them with the liner that I'm using. And I can go in with this um, thinner liner too, um, which I will probably do right now because I'm realizing that that would be super helpful and he's got a little bit of a more of an upturned nose in the um, reference but I don't think that's a big deal and so I'm using this uh, zero one to then shade the upper part of his eye to create that realistic shadow that most people do. Their eyelid creates a shadow over the top part of their eye. Some people you end up using their color to emphasize this, and I'm using hatching because I just think it might be a little bit more simpler. And I'm also using some of the light work to um, create some hair marks here and some just sort of like shadowing here. And because it's a thinner pencil or a thinner pen, um, it won't be too crazy. And he looks like the Cheshire Cat, I think. I just realized. <laughs> He's giving me Cheshire Cat vibes. Oh, what have I done? I'm kidding. Um, oh, and he has these little one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There's like these lines. So cats have these little lines and they go into whiskers. There we go. We got some whiskers looking good. And we're just going to keep 
keep shading a bit because I'm realizing that I'm not exactly I'm not actually done with what I want to accomplish here. Oh, and guess who forgot <laughs> the collar again? I had mentioned that I needed to do the collar and then I got caught up on making his face. And I might have made his eyes too big, but that's okay. That's the price we pay for for wanting to exaggerate. Okay. There we go. And I think we have our sketch. So I think what we can do is just, um, we can erase, I think. Yeah, I think we can erase. So we can erase after I've done some light hatchworking on some areas that I think need it. Um, and then we will be on our way. to sketching things out. Or not sketching things out, that's not what I meant. I meant um, coloring. <laughs> okay, so I think we can now and I'm just gonna connect these lines. Here we go. We've erased and now we're going to erase. And I think I just wanted a little bit of. There we go. Okay. Perfect. We got our little guy. We got our little guy. He's all lined up. And I think I'm just going to use the black around him um, as a preemptive measure. Um, I just want to block out the area first. All right, there we go. I just want to block it out before I go full ham on the color because the background is black. And I'm not going to go too close to him, but I just want to... Okay, so now it's time to lay down our colors on the side. So I'm going to do that on the left hand side just for good fun. Let's make sure where our thing is focused. Okay, and um, I'm going to start with the blue. So the cape is going to be blue and it's going to be in these shades of blue from the lightest. So the lightest will be this blue, which is a PB1. And the middle shade of the blue <clears throat> will be PB2. Okay. And the darkest shade will be PB3. Okay. And that'll be the front part of the coat and the sleeve and the... Um, and a cape on the other side, so that'll be it. Um, let's see. We also have some gray, which is on the kind of like cape area. So this is kind of a 
It's kind of a third color. This isn't really like something that I'm gonna be focusing on. The other two are, are more distinctive. This will be for the cream color and the white in the outfit. Okay, and last but not least, our orange that we're gonna be using, which will be not as bright as a true orange. It's kind of like a pink more, but I hope it'll look good. This is for the face and the gold trimmings around. And um, yeah, these are all the colors that we're gonna use. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Tombow liner <clears throat> to clean up this area. Um, Tombow does not um, smudge, but maybe it would just be better to lay the colors down first. Maybe it would be, okay. So let's just start on the blue. Before we do that, I'm gonna take a drink of water because I'm thirsty. Mm. And we've reached about almost a minute mark. <clears throat> so if you want, I'm gonna take a quick snack. <laughs> you can grab a snack if you want. Um, take a break while I'm drinking water. And um, yeah, so I hope you like the colors on the left. So the reason why I came up with um, these colors was, I think I mentioned it earlier, like way in the beginning of this, about an hour ago, that the blue is, the blue is so nice and bright, which I love. So it's just gonna take away from the outfit because the belt is so pink. Um, but I wasn't really feeling any of the pink markers I had. I just didn't have a color section that I just really enjoyed. And I didn't have a muted version of these ones. So I had to work with what I had to work with. So, yeah. I think we should just start with the blue and just do the basic blocking. So this is what I do. Um, I just start with all the colors that I have and I just start with the lightest ones and I just go through and block everything out and then go from lightest to darkest. There you go. Okay, so this is the lightest blue that we're gonna be using. And there's tons of little areas that are not blue, so we have to kind of pay attention. <laughs> Um, I hope you're all doing well. I know I mentioned that before. I think, I think quarantine's made me really bored. Um, so I decided to maybe learn how to do some guitar. I don't know. So that's on my mind. That's a goal. I'm gonna learn guitar and I've already, um, I've already started. It's definitely a bit painful on the on the phalanges if you're um, if you're not used to it. So I'm feeling a little bit of the ouch. <laughs> so, but I think it'll get better. I've heard it gets better after a couple weeks of playing the guitar. So that's kind of where I'm at. Oop, I moved it. Yikes! Sorry. Every time I move it, I'm just going to have to adjust. Okay. 
good, good to know. And then the eyes, I'm gonna use this blue. Okay. The belt will be in the orange. There we go. And the uh, kind of top part, so the cat's nose and all the way like up. So about the top part of the cat has this like orangey color. And then it's like kind of like the underneath is a bit white. It's my impression. But I feel like that's the right impression that I'm getting. I don't know. It's a little more orange on top and then less orange on the bottom, more of like that white. And then we're gonna use the gray and I'm gonna use the orange on these spots. Okay, we have some blue, we have some orange, and um, there's some parts that I definitely missed about here. <clears throat> and I think we have all the blue. And then we're going to do the gray. Okay. And then underneath, I think here and here in some areas like maybe around the other side. Okay. So we have our first colors down and now that we have our first colors down, I think I'm going to clean up the edges because it is bothering me. So we'll get that done. Oh, this Tombow is not looking too hot. Okay, we're gonna use this one. Not even this one either? Oh, this one's better. Thank you. 
Sorry, I got quiet. Um, I don't really know what to say. I said everything I need to. What's up with me? Um, let's see. I'm working on uh, my next page, which is the sending a letter one. Um, it's cute. It's got a little mouse on it. Um, it's in a little room, so there's lots of fun things to look at in the room. Um, lots of frames. I had written a song for it, but I realized that um, I would just like to learn the guitar before I even get to writing any songs about, um, or even like, you know, I, it, need, it needed instrumentals, I guess. So that's what I was focused on. Okay, so we've done all of the light colors. So it's now on time to the medium ones the medium tones and I think I should just go ahead and make the blue stand out and we're gonna do that the deep blue the, me the medium tone blue so we're just gonna go with that and the medium tone blue does go over the eyes as well so that it has a nice shadow to it and yes I think this part too Yeah, I just realized I forgot to do that part. It's always better to go from light to dark. Um, but if you're digital, you can start in any order you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Um, that's the beauty of digital, but... Uh, I don't find it very, I don't find it intuitive for myself. So maybe that's just, that's just me. <laughs> okay. Coloring is the part where I still have a lot to learn on, I think. That's the part where I'm just kind of like, ah, what do I do with all of this, you know, color and stuff. Um, but I'm getting the hang of it. I'm trying to, you know, find resources that'll help me figure it all out and um, get everything settled. Just kind of feels like getting you know, color or getting that understanding of color can be just not as intuitive as I thought it would be. I thought you could just pick colors, but I don't know. I think a part of me is like, ah, I don't want to just pick colors. I want to understand it even more fully. I think I understand everything very rudimentary. Like it's, it's kind of understandable, but at some point it's, if you test me on it, I'd probably fail, but I could execute, you know, some, some parts of color that way. So it's not a complete loss. This is such a nice blue too. I'm like, I'm pretty pleased with the with the color. It's just such a nice blue. Okay, so because I'm really enjoying this blue, I'm just gonna go for it and do the darkest shade.
and there's one about under here so it's like a block of color a block of dark so that's helpful and then there's some blocks of dark down here as well as some inside of the chest as well and Give me a second. Okay. Sorry, that was my Google Home being like, hey, we're just gonna play a video on the TV. Okay. I think, I think we're headed in the right direction here. So most of this coat is going to be in the PB2 color. Um, the PB1 is just for the, the highlighting. So that's why a lot of this is kind of modeled, but I'll try to bring it forward so that it doesn't look so strange. This blue really stands out. Okay. So I think let me see. I think it's now time to shade with the orange and then see what we got. Okay. Because we used a lot of the blue. We've gotten some of the blue out. Um, but I think we still have a lot of, a lot of coloring ahead of us. Okay. Time for the sash. So I'm just gonna go with the 97. This is the medium tone, which is about here. Um, and we're just gonna, so this is the lighter part. And then the other side is the darkest part. So kind of wanna make that known. And I think on the darker parts, which is this front area, the 
light is going to be less prominent, so the orange won't be as light either. So there we go. And it's just going to be really light here. And I think it'll be pretty good on the other side too. I don't think that's a place where you have to worry about too much. I'm just going to shade this area as well. We're gonna blend out the orange a bit on the cheeks. A bit of darker kind of around this area. With this little nose too. Shading with the gray. Let's see what else we have to do. Um, I would say getting some of the, I think still the inner part of the coat is still too light for me. Yeah, it's still a bit too bright, so. We'll just go with darkening up as much as we can. It's the first time I've used this kind of blue with this pink orange. So I'm not sure how it was going to turn out. Um, and I wasn't really sure how mm. 
Okay. He kind of looks like the Cheshire Cat right now. <laughs> okay. Um. sides as well as up here and I think also on the coat as well and the buttons are a bit darker too I'm just covering it so it just looks more more presentable and then we'll go in with the darker shade because I realized that the coat is pretty dark so we're just gonna go for it There we go. Okay, and we're gonna go back in. There's a lot of this that was kind of lost when we were doing the coloring, so I just wanna bring it back a bit. Looking a bit better, still has some um, Sorry, I'm quiet because I'm kind of focusing on what I'm doing. So I do apologize. I, uh, supposed to be talking. Let's see. Trying to adjust um, what I got going on here. And. I think 
that was my problem is that I didn't create any of this like darkness here too kind of in the eyes to make them a bit deeper I think I probably should have done that makes them look a little less like a Cheshire cat <clears throat> but he's still got a really rosy kind of glow to him I will not take that away and <clears throat> Okay, and I think now is the time for some highlighting. So we're gonna do some of that with our um, gel pen. So I feel like we still have two There we go. I think that's what I wanted. I wanted a little bit of on the top of his face. Yeah. Okay, now it's time for liner. I'm gonna just go and line this side here with it. This is a gel pen liner, and this is gonna help um, me distinguish where some of the spots are. And on the buttons is better. With the nose. And I think probably the liner over here, I've decided I don't like that. So we're just changing that up right now. Because I've decided I'm not a fan. Okay, so so we got our little guy, um, and I think he's pretty charming. And I feel like we're about at the end of what we're supposed to be doing. We've colored a lot. Oh, I forgot something. Forgot to. Uh, I forgot to do this on the side. So these like little, forgot to do these little hairs on the outside of his head as well as the top. These like little hairs are, you know, stuff that I find important. And um, yeah, I think we have pretty much everything. We have our cat um, done in marker and um, 
overall I think turned out uh, pretty good and yeah I don't have any other like I don't have any complaints about him um, and we've worked on this you know you've drawn with me for about an hour and a half um, thank you for joining me I appreciate uh, you know you guys trying this out if you did like the reference um, I would love if you could let me know and uh, we could do something a little similar next time and um, maybe choose a coat that's a bit lighter I feel like a lot of the stuff kind of got lost um, because it's he's just got such a dark coat on so I'll try something that doesn't clash with the background next time and um, yeah we can uh, maybe do that uh, wishing you all well this Saturday or Sunday. Wishing you all well this Sunday and um, hope you're staying safe, um, washing your hands and, um, you know, staying good and not getting sick. Um, and if you are, I'm sorry that you are. I uh, hope you feel better soon. Um, yeah, hope you have the rest of your weekend um, treat you well. Okay, bye. Oops, bye. <laughs>